Namaskar. In the previous session, we understood what is Gauss's law and also obtain an expression for it, right? Today, let us understand for some symmetric charge configuration, it is easy to find electric field using Gauss's law. This can be understood very well by taking up some examples. So let's see some three applications of Gauss's law and find electric field at a point due to a charged body. Okay? So let us start and understand some applications. Right? Okay. So applications of Gauss's law. Field due to an infinitely long straight uniformly charged wire. That means we are taking an infinitely long conductor, then a straight conductor and uniformly charged conductor. Right? Okay. Consider an infinitely long straight wire with uniform linear charge density lambda. So let us consider this and all over there is charge. Let us take the charge as positive charge. Now I am considering two length elements here, charged elements here and here say 1 and 2. So because of this, suppose I consider a plane, say for example, if this is a wire, this is a conductor, then I am considering a plane in this way, perpendicular to this length, perpendicular to this length. So this way, the whole, whole around, I am taking the cross section. So there is a plane, if I consider that plane, then I can find what is the electric field at a point due to these two charged elements. So if I consider some length r from here, if I rotate that around the wire, then I get a, a circular disc around it. So let me consider that. So this will be, so uh, this will be the circular disc uh, say area or, uh, in which uh, I would like to find the electric field at the edge of this, any point, okay, it may be here, it may be here, anywhere if I consider, let me find out what is the electric field or what is the direction of the electric field which I get. So consider, let us consider a point at this, uh, this, at the edge P, alright, so from here let the radius or the um, radius of this circular disk be r, right? So this also will be r and this also will be r, right? So now let me consider what, let me find out what is the electric field at this point due to this charge element. So what will be the direction of electric field? It will be in this direction. Now if I consider, say, if this is the direction, I can resolve this into two components, one will be in this direction, right, and one will be in this direction. Similarly, due to this, due to this, there is electric field, due to this, there will be electric field in this direction. So I can resolve again that into its components in this direction and in this direction again, right? So there is vertical components. Now these vertical components, if they are at the same distance from here, I have considered a plane, this plane, such a way that they are at the same distance from here. So definitely they are, these vertical components, okay, will cancel and the only these horizontal components will remain, they will add up. How much they will become? Of course, I have to talk about this way. This I can find and find the result. So what do I get? What do I get? I get this. Alright? This is the, this will be the direction. So electric field at this point will be radial in the radial direction. Right? So we find that such pairs will always exist. And such pairs of elements always exist for which the vertical components will cancel and the field will be always radial. So we find that everywhere, if I take anywhere a point, since it's an infinitely long charged conductor, any place, if I take point here and try to find its electric field, we find that the electric field is always in the radial direction, always in the radial direction. 
So let us now understand. The electric field is radial everywhere in the plane cutting the wire normally. Its magnitude depends only on the radial distance r. Right? So let us use the Gauss's law. So let us consider now this conductor and it is charged and let us construct a Gaussian surface that is in cylindrical because wire is cylindrical we construct a Gaussian surface which is cylindrical in shape. So this is one edge of that other edge and I am constructing a Gaussian surface. If I consider a point say P here the electric field will be always radial and the electric field in this direction we need not consider, right? So, P is a point here, electric field will be radial. What is the length? Let us consider the length of the constructed cylinder as L. So, that means even the wire we are considering length L. So, let us consider an infinitely long thin straight wire with uniform linear charge density lambda. Let us construct a Gaussian uh, cylinder, su cylindrical surface as shown here in the figure. This so, what will be the flux through the two ends of the cylindrical surface? These two ends of the cylindrical surface from top and bottom, the flux is zero. So, we since the field is only radial. So, therefore, E is normal to the cylindrical part of the surface. So, if it is cylindrical part like this, it will be always normal, normal to the cylindrical part of the surface. So, its magnitude is constant since it depends only on R. The surface area of the curved part is how much? 2 pi R L where L is the length of the cylinder. So therefore, the flux through the Gaussian surface is given by what we have already learned how to find the flux, E dot delta S. So flux will be equal to, since it is radial, so it is normal. So, right, uh, the angle between E and R is 0. So therefore, cos of 0 is 1. So therefore, we just get E into 2 pi R L, E into delta S, this area. Now, using Gauss's law, we want to find what is the flux. We need to find what is the charge enclosed inside this Gaussian surface. The cylindrical surface which we have constructed, it's an imaginary one. Inside that, how much charge is enclosed is very important because Gauss's law says flux through any surface, close, enclosed surface, is equal to the charge enclosed divided by epsilon 0. So, what is the charge enclosed? I will find. So, what is the charge density on the um, linear charge density on the wire? We know it is lambda. What is the length of the wire which we have considered? L. So, lambda into L will be the charge enclosed. So, therefore, the surface includes charge lambda L. So, now from, from Gauss's law, flux through this surface will be Q upon epsilon 0 which will be equal to lambda L upon epsilon 0. So, we know flux is equal to E into 2 pi R L. Also, flux phi is equal to, so I can write here, I can write here, flux phi is equal to, phi is equal to lambda L upon epsilon 0. So, we can equate the right hand sides, right? So, we get E into 2 pi R L will be equal to lambda L upon epsilon 0. L will cancel and hence what we get E is equal to lambda upon 2 pi epsilon 0 R. Right? So, using vector notation because the electric field is a vector. So, we have to express it in terms of vector notation. So, E vector E at any point is given by lambda upon 2 pi epsilon 0 R into unit vector N where N is a unit vector in the radial direction normal to the Y. The remaining two applications we will see in the coming sessions. That's all for today. See you next time.